This video is for ITC staff uh, to help them interpret the inventory import results file that comes from um, extracting the classic data from EIS and then taking that extracted data and importing it into an instance and in redesign. We have an inventory installation and migration guide that's available on the wiki and that details the steps on migrating inventory. So there are um, eight steps to migrate a district from classic EIS to redesign. Your tech department should be assisting and extracting each of your district's classic data and importing it into the redesign. So the rest of these slides is going to review the contents of the extraction and the inventory import results. So this is what the extract log looks like. And so one of the steps in the migration is to run the extract. And so that's going to go out there and pull specific information out of inventory and in classic into TXT and XML files that will then be imported into redesign. So as you can see on here, it's going out there for sample build district and um, it's making sure the IRN is set. And then it's going to go out there and do these extractions. And it looks like there's going to be 11. And also the way that the extract is set up, if um, it's also set up to create the EIS CD zip file, it's going to include that extract as well. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 files. So it extracts that data, creates output files. And then from there, you'll see on this one that there weren't any warning messages. It did a clean extract generated the extracts, created the output file. And you'll also notice that it didn't take very long either um, to extract the data. So here is another image of an extract. And so with this one, there is a warning. So you'll see a warning here saying that the trans underscore exp.txt file, which is the transfer transaction data, um, to, is empty. So it generated an empty file, but it's telling you that it's empty. So when you see warnings like this, you just want to make sure that that is actually true. So that's where I included a note here. Please ensure that your empty extract files should truly be empty. So if I see a warning message like this, I am going to go into their classic data into EIS screen, into the transfer transaction information and see if it's empty. So if this district did not process any transfer transactions, then it will generate an empty file, but it's warning us and that's okay. So obviously there isn't gonna be any data migrated over for transfer transactions in redesign because they didn't have any in classic. So obviously if you get this error message, from let's say the item information. Obviously, you know that there is item information in, in uh, classic. So if that does happen, then you need to determine what is causing um, that extract to be empty. Um, what I did here is just kind of a, a crosswalk of the extract files and what data in EIS it's pulling from. So the XML file that gets created is pulling from the configuration data in EIS main data screen. So your acquisition information is your acquisition transaction information. Your disposition transaction or extract is from EIS screen as well in the disposition transaction. Your disposition codes are in this file, and that's pulling from EIS maint, the disposition codes. Same thing with the function and fund. Those are coming from EIS maint as well, your function and fund codes. 
another transaction information, your items, um, the items underscore exp is coming from item screen. And then going back into your maintenance information, the um, item categories and locations are located in these two files. And it's coming obviously from your maintenance programs, cat screen and location screen. Um, the org CD underscore EXP is no longer used. So that file um, will not, you can just ignore that extract file. It's not going to get imported. The EIS transfer transaction data is located in this trans underscore EXP file. And then depending on how you set up the extract, um, you can also um, include the EIS CD information. So if you did set it up that way, then you're going to have a zip file of their EIS CD data. So one thing to note, you know, looking at all of this information, there are a couple maintenance programs um, that aren't located in here. Um, they are in a file, uh, the asset class codes, the organization codes and the condition codes, they aren't listed here, but the asset class codes are imported in in the items underscore exp file. So your asset classes will migrate over it from that file and get created. And then the organization codes and condition codes from the maintenance menu is located in the locat. So the locat underscore exp includes your location codes, your condition codes, and your organization codes, those three. Also, just a reminder that the pending transaction data does not migrate over. So when you are going in and reviewing the inventory results file, so you extracted the data out, the um, information was imported in, um, the, and then a results file is created. I would recommend viewing the results file in Notepad or Notepad++ just makes it a little bit easier. And so your tech department should review uh, the first section of the results file related to the building of the Docker container and the importing of the database information. Um, so there's going to be several lines of information that is for them to review. And then your starting point is to look for the size of import line. And so on that line, and so in this example, it's in on line 60 of the import results file, it says size of import is 12. That is talking about the 12 extract files that were created. So if you go back and look at your extract log, um, you want to just kind of confirm that when you count these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that those total equals the size of imports. So I'm going to um, exit out of here for a minute, and I'm going to go in and kind of show you um, some of these files that I'm talking about. So here is an EIS extract log file from a clean extract. So in here, it's telling me that it's beginning to extract the data uh, for that particular district. And it's going out there and generating the extracts. And then once those extract is complete, it's creating the output files. So pretty clean. Now, if I had um, an extract log file that contained a warning, again, this is what I'm going to see. So it's going to go through there and it's going to generate a warning for any extracted data that is empty. So looking at this particular district, it's giving me a warning that the trans exp.txt. So if I go back to my crosswalk on that PowerPoint, that's the transfer transaction information. So again, if I see a warning like that, I'm going to go into their classic data and I'm going to go into EIS screen, go into the transfer transaction option and just confirm that there aren't any transfer transactions for this district. That's okay. I can ignore the warning. And then here is where um, an example of the import results file. And where I was saying this first several, you know, lines are intended for your tech department to look over. Um, so that's all of this information here. And so they're just, you know, 
reviewing this, making sure that everything looks good. There aren't any type of any errors or anything like that. And like I said, your starting point here is the size of imports. So I purposely put start here. It's because this is where you're going to start. So you're going to start and just confirm that there were 12 extract files. So I go back to my extracts to confirm that. And then from there, my second starting point is going to the first process import line. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint so we can talk about that. So in regards to the process import line, this is going, there's going to be a process import line for each extract file. So in this particular example, it's the district XML, XML file. That's the first one it's looking at. And so the way I'm able to tell that this is the district XML file is I'm first going to look at the end of this line and I'm going to see something um, in regards to configuration import. So configuration, that is a, you know, a, a sign that this must be something to do with their configuration data, the dat screen information. And so after that, I'm just going through here and it's going through and looking for that file and it's looking through all the extract files and finding the file to load which is this one right here. All of these um, files will be um, named EIS underscore, their IRN number underscore, and then the name of that extract, in this case, district. And it is a .xml file for this one. So it's going to go through then and tell me if there are any errors. So I'm looking for this error section here. And if I don't see anything, it's empty. Then I'm looking at the imported just to confirm that it imported one record, which is true. It just imported that information on the XML file. So it should only be one record for the configuration information. Here are some other examples. Um, so another process import, again, I'm going to go to the end of that line disposition code. So this is pretty much telling me it's importing the disposition codes from EIS main. And so again, to confirm that, I go down to the file to load. And again, it's EIS underscore IRN underscore DSPCD, disposition codes. And so again, do I have any errors? Nope. My disposition code imported number, seven. So it imported seven records. Now, if I would go back into their classic data into EIS main and into the disposition codes, there should be seven uh, disposition codes in there. Next, I'm going to the next one, process import. I'm starting the next extract or the next file from the extract. And that says at the end, function code import. So these are my function codes from EIS main. Again, I scroll down until I see a file to load. And again, here's the name of the file. Any errors? No errors. How many imported? 19. If I move on to the next one, it's the condition codes from EIS Mate. Again, I go down to file to load. That's the name of the extract file. And no errors it imported three. Now, if I had any errors, which you are going to see errors definitely in some of these, um, here's what you would do in order to, um, you know, to find that error. So here again, process import and it's disposition import. So it's not disposition codes, it's disposition import. So that is my disposition transactions. File to load, EIS underscore IRN underscore DISP underscore EXP. So these are my disposition transactions that imported over, but I received an error. And so looking at this, it looks like I have a couple of them here. It says invalid disposition code for tag number, and then it gives me the tag number, which is great because I can go right back into classic 
go into EIS screen, look up that disposition transaction, um, you know, query that tag, that tag number. And my guess is there's probably a blank disposition method. And if so, you can modify that record, enter in a valid disposition code, and that will clean it up. So same thing, here's another one. And I'm kind of looking at like the user messages, error, and valid disposition code, error, and valid disposition code for 102.734. So again, I would go into EIS screen, go into the disposition transactions, find that tag number, uh, modify it, and enter in a valid disposition code. So these are things that I'm cleaning up in Classic. Um, if I do not clean these up in Classic, they will not get migrated over. So, um, so that's why it's necessary to go in to Classic and change it. Um, otherwise, these disposition transactions will not migrate, will not migrate over into Redesign. Um, and this down here just kind of explained uh, what I was talking about. So here's another example of an error. So process import, location code import. So it's, it's um, importing location codes and it's telling me here the error, location code import error, row 16. It's an invalid category or number. So my location code um, on that row on the extract file so I would have to go into this extract file, um, maybe pull it up through Notepad, go to row 16 and look to see uh, which one it's talking about. Um, so that's one way to look that up. Or if I'm seeing that I have several, like for example, I've got row 16, I have row 43, and all of these errors are on the same line. So I would need to use my bottom scroll bar to keep scrolling to find them all. And if it's easier for you, um, you can go to the, after the first one, you can hit your enter key and um, in order to place each of these error messages on its own line, just so it's easier to read. So that's what I did. I went in and hit enter after each one of these. So my error record line here now looks like this. So it looks like I have four errors. So again, I could go in to the, extract file to those particular roads and look up um, what's going on with that location category. Or I could also generate an EIS 001 report in Classic just for the locations and go in and take a look and see, do I have locations that either have a missing location category or a missing location number? You should have both. Classic required both. So for some reason, if you have one that's um, incorrect, then that needs to be fixed in Classic. So all of these um, warnings, you know, when we keep adding them, um, because every new set of data, you never know what um, the data set is going to have in it from Classic. So a new import generates some type of new error that we need to um, record, we have placed them in this common import errors and warnings. And there's a link here to the wiki that contains all of the different warnings and errors that you can get in inventory. And so um, in there, it will go in and include the actual error and also the fix if there's something that you need to do in order to fix it. Um, and I believe that is all I have here. So um, we are going to uh, release that PowerPoint out here um, in the wiki so that you guys have access to it as well as this recording. Appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. Thank you, bye.